This next, next example, we are going to find the volume enclosed by the paraboloid z equals to 4 minus x squared minus y squared and the xy plane. Now, if you took your time to draw the xy trace, yz trace, and x, xz trace, you will find that this actually gives you the paraboloid where uh, if you cut it this way, you get a parabola, and if you cut it that way, you get circles. Okay? So that, that's the, the region that we're trying to find the volume of. How do you find the volume under any surface? You're supposed to find the volume as integral over the base domain of the function, uh, function xy, dA. That's how you're supposed to find the volume under any, uh, any surface, right? Now, if, if I write this explicitly, I mean a little more explicitly, by plugging this in as uh, 4 minus x squared minus y squared dA, and then you think about what to do with this domain, um, you quickly realize that polar coordinate is the better choice to do it here because it's circular. Anytime if you have a circular region or a, a region in the base that's easily described by polar coordinates, it's better if you use the polar coordinate system. So let's try that. So we're going to use, again, the formula is R d r d theta. 4 minus x squared minus y squared. And then we have to figure out a way to describe this circle. Oh, by the way, what is this circle at the base? That circle at the base is actually the xy trace because it's where this paraboloid intersects with the xy plane. In order to find that out, since xy plane is z equal to 0, you, get, you plug in 0 for z and you get 0 equals to 4 minus x squared minus y squared. And if you modify this slightly by x, uh, moving the x squared and y squared to the other side, you get x squared plus y squared equal to 4, which says it's a circle centered at the origin, and the radius is 2. two. two. Exactly. Now, since we're using drd theta, meaning that you have to paint this region radially, Think about where R should begin and where R should end. It begins where? Origin. At the origin. Every time when you, your rays begin at the origin, you put zero. And then if you have some, if you stop at some curve, you have to be able to express this curve using R equals to some function of theta. But this time it's easy because what are these points? These are a collection of points where r value is 2, right? r value is equal to 2. So r equals to 2 perfectly describes this circle outside, so that's why I want to put a 2 there. Okay. And then, again, theta should go from 0 to 2 pi because the rays have to completely go, uh, completely circle it, right? Now let's, let's continue to co compute. Now we have a slight problem here because x and y's are functions of r and theta, right? x and y's, uh, you remember that x is equal to r cosine theta and y is equal to r sine theta. So they do change as r and theta change, but uh, unless we, we know what x and y Unless we put x and y exactly as functions of r and theta, uh, we can't compute this, right? So one method will be to plug these in here to represent them as functions of r and theta. But here's an even better way. We know that r squared is what? What's the relationship between r squared and x and y? x squared plus y squared. x squared plus y squared, right? We can use this and rewrite this inside as 4 minus r squared times r dr d theta. 
Now that's a very, very easy integral to compute. You integrate this, oh by the way you should simplify bit 4, so it's 4r minus r cubed dr d theta and if you integrate this, this is uh, 2r squared minus 1 fourth of r to the fourth and you're plugging in 2 and 0 d theta and when you plug in 2 that's uh, 8 when you plug in 2 your 2 to the fourth part is 16 16 divided by 4 is 4 integrate 0 to 2 pi and that's 4 and if you integrate 4, that's 4 theta, and you have to plug in 2 pi and 0, which gives you 8 pi as your answer.